Right guys, what's up? Mike Wienerbach here. Today we're solving one of the eternal mysteries of mankind. How to put muscle on a guy with long arms. And for that, nobody better than my brother Jan. As you can tell, very tall, very long arms. So, the conventional wisdom is like, yo bro, to get big on your chest, you gotta bench, overhead press, close grip. This will send you to the hospital, but not get you gains. Simply because the mechanics do not work. So if I get a client or a family member that has that particular, you know, narrow clavicles, long arms, if I put him on the bench, the racking on racking by itself is gonna murder his cuff. So the first thing I do is I take a look and I see like that this is a bit elevated and protruding. So the first thing before I do anything is I put him in the lat pull down and I have him do reverse shrugs to set the shoulders and shoulder blades right before we do anything. So th that's, we almost had to get a new uh, lat pull down because he's too tall but we just couldn't afford it. So we'll have to make do with this one. Sorry guys. So all I have him do is like lock the shoulder blades <laughs> as much as he can precisely, you know, and then get maybe like eight to 10 reps. So we're working this muscle, right? By the way, you can buy those t-shirts. They're pretty awesome, if I may say so. So I would have him do like two to three sets here. And then after each set, I have, would have him come on the floor just about here, let's say and do some push-ups with an inward intention. So nothing dramatic, kind of a wide grip warping the floor. So just like that, yeah. I wouldn't even have that go all the way up. Just keep it controlled, you know, keep it tight. Very good. So this is just a quick segment. And then we would go, you know, for, so for somebody like him, he can really create the maximum force if he does cables. Now there's one thing that people with their dying breath, they will say that dumbbells and barbells build more muscle than cables. That's simply not true. Breakthrough. Your muscles don't have eyes. They don't know what you're doing. There's tension and mechanical work. Whoever you get there is meaningless. So at first I would have him just get a good set, you know, arms straight, get the perfect squeeze, really feeling the pecs. So let's go for it. And now that we have primed the body, keeping the shoulder blades down with exercise over there, he's obviously a lot more effective than he would be if he just goes in. So then I give him a couple of minutes to rest, a couple, a minute or so. And then from there on, I would go into the second set where we play a little bit more in terms of which fibers we're using. So like pushing the chest out versus coming forward. So you ready? Let's do it. So at first we're pretty upright, you know, straight up. And then the next five, I'd have him like push out the sternum. So basically where it says give tips with stretching that part of the shirt. And then we'd lean forward a little bit for the next round. You know, but without ever rounding the shoulders because you don't want to make it. Very nice. Then one thing is often overlooked is the range of motion. So let's say if I have him come out, let's say, just come, step, use the handles, and you go into a negative, so you come out, 
and he finishes the rep like way behind the body let's say here right see now the pecs actually can't work so what he's doing now to bring the handles forward is using his delts right so now the training shoulders that's not what you want you want to stay till here and no further back okay so then from then we would switch over here actually let's use this bench grab maybe like 30s 35s whatever you want to grab and we'll do a little combo set of a deep stretch with the pec fly into a press so again shoulder blades stay back coming down parallel get the activation down here my brother's way stronger than this but this is a demo tape so working on form here and then on the second set I have him turn just come up till about here and I just make sure that the pecs are working constantly right good relax like the packs they don't work here they don't work up there so on the next set I would have them do the same thing but on the presses I would push down on the negative a little bit more to make it a little harder and I was a short rest you good to go or need some more time Hollywood's tough man what can I tell you so So, and now I know people are gonna scream like, oh, those are half reps. No, those are proper reps. Like up here is just being lazy in the shoulder works. And then you kind of turn around and like, like on the way down, I give you like a gentle push. Good. And then we move on to shoulders, short commercial break. So for shoulders, we want to create the maximum overload without just hammering him with weights. So I made up this like triple set that is like barbell band, kneeling band. It will all make sense once you see it. So we start here and we're not just shoving the bar up and down with like having an inward intention to really work on our delts. So I would have him do like anywhere like five to six clean reps here no lower than chin level let's say good then he would take like 10 seconds and then we we'll do a band press now mind you this band is made for normal people so with my brother, it stretches to like eight foot, so that gets rather difficult as it goes up, you know. It's like somebody short like me can easily do so. So obviously it gets harder as you go up, so the contracted phase does more work. And then as he fatigues, he would come down into sort of like a fake lunge, so to speak, you know, and I would have him pump out for about let's say three reps or whatever two more one great good stuff and we do about four rounds of this good. so for the media adult we work in the physics right so this I learned from Ben Pakolsky so the resistance is 90 degrees to the arm so if you do a side raise here the resistance is really kind of at the bottom right so if you only train at that stance, you're not really working the entire strength curve. So that's why after, let's say, four reps, I have him walk out. And now the resistance is felt like, see, now it's 90 degrees here. And it's more felt, you know, in that part of the motion. And then after another four, I have him turn around. And now the resistance is 90 degrees is here, as you can see, right? So I was bad at physics, but I think I was bad because nobody told me that if I was paying attention, I could get bigger muscles. So 
If you're a teacher and you're watching this, pay attention, tell your kids about how to get huge. And then we're changing arms and we're doing the same thing, just on the other side. You know, just making sure we don't involve the traps and everything we do is I'm taking one step out and everything is guided from the elbow. And I will turn around again and just... So this is a really good way to train your medial delt in this one weird trick, grow your medial delt in five minutes, but this would actually work. So, good. Commercial break. And for triceps, the traditional medicine would always be like, you know, hammer away, close grip bench press or whatever. But again, in terms of his wrists and clavicles, it wouldn't work. So let's just be smart about it and work the strength curve. So we would start out with a tape press where we're watching, mostly working the, stretching the long head of the tricep, which is also where the most meat is, you know. I'm not a fan of the full lockout because it's a tad too harsh on the elbow for my taste and then we would be going into a close grip press even close on the elbows here and I might even give him like some additional resistance because he would be stronger there than a tape press needless to say good and then for the contracted I really like the bands because you can get a nice contraction without being so harsh on the elbows. Good. And also you could make this a drop set where you basically start here and then as you fatigue, you come down a bit. That would work quite as well, okay? That leaves us with biceps. Now, for them guns, biceps, everybody will tell you barbell curls, bro, barbell curls, barbell curls. Barbell curls will not work if your forearms are that long. So the force will be sitting too much on the wrist. You get inflammation here. And also, you're really only using the weight from here to here, because from here on, you're pulling it toward you, right? So. A barbell curl will just get you an inflammation here. So now there's two ways to fix it. So one is a bit more elaborate and this is like a toy we have here from Watson Gym. It's a collapsible dumbbell which he can use now to basically curl in the contracted face because the lever is still away from him. You should really badger your gym owners to buy you this. It's not that expensive, you don't have it. Or do a GoFundMe or something. And then you can basically collapse this here. And now we're working in the bottom range, right, of the muscle. Perfect. So that's one way to do it. And then the other way is a bit more traditional. We could also work the physics again with the, with the three steps. So again, we have resistance at 90 degrees. So like if we're close, you know, the cable is 90 degrees down here, you know, up. So from, from here to here, not much would happen. So he gets his first couple reps in and then we take a step back. And now 90 degree is about here, right? Sort of like midpoint-ish of the strength curve and then take another step back and now 90 degrees up here okay. good so that wraps up the workout if you ask me why didn't we do back because for back his long arms work really well for him um, Takeaway message, don't fall victim to dogma. Like only because people say, yo, Ripito says X, like, yeah, that was then, but science has moved on, okay? 
So don't be a lemming, don't be a sheep, use your head. Thank you for my brother for playing along here. And uh, all right guys, take it easy, bye.